Do you think Frankenstein's monster would like some Frankenstein's chicken hand pies? Hey y'all, it's April and thanks for watching my crazy creative life. Also, it's still the 13 snacks of Halloween and guess what? Today's day 13, so we've got through it. Whew, didn't, I was beginning to wonder. I know me and my girls have got, come down with something bad and I was beginning to wonder. But anyway, um, if you recall, I don't remember which episode it was in this series. Uh, I'll try to figure it out and I'll show you. But anyway, if you've watched any of this series, I told you that I'm hoping to show you how to make little chicken hand pies. Um, and I always made them for my girls on Halloween and they would be ready like when they got home from off the bus that day from school. But today I'm making them a day early because I want to try to hopefully get this out in time and show you in case you want to decide to do that for your kiddos tomorrow whenever they get off the school bus because they are good. But anyway, um, that's what I'm showing you today. So it's very, very simple. It is the filling is the same filling if you have seen and I'll try to link it right here but when I made it was the biscuit chicken pot pies it's pretty much that same feeling so it's a very easy feeling it's just um, a can of chicken can of some kind of cream soup it doesn't matter what kind your some frozen mixed vegetables and some cheese and whatever spices you want in there and then we're going to roll out some pie crust, pre-made pie crust, and cut it out with our cookie cutters and fill that, put a little egg wash on it, stick them in the oven, and that's it. And they are really good. So I want to shut up blabbering and let's go ahead and jump on into the recipe. Right, so we're just going to take one can, sorry that's blurring a little bit, but one can of your, your chicken, chicken breast chunks, and this is the 12.5 ounce. So you want to drain the water off of that. I always just open the little bit, press it down, and then, then drain till I do mine. But anyway, uh, I'm just doing one can. Now, if if you're feeding a big family, then go ahead and double this recipe. And to be truthful, this recipe, I'm, I'm doing my best to try to tell you the, what I use because typically I just make it. I don't really have a recipe for it that I go by. I just where to go <laughs> but okay so you want to just break this chicken up a little bit and this chicken's done everything in here is going to be done the only thing we're doing is uh baking that cup uh, that pie crust because and then this warms up obviously while it's baking but that's it and my oven is on 425 by the way okay I guess my teaspoon's dirty, so I'm doing a teaspoon. This is half teaspoons, but I'm doing a teaspoon of garlic powder. A teaspoon of onion powder. You can do the extra fine or you can do the granulated. And I'm gonna tell y'all, one day when I was just coming making this up, I decided to put some curry in there. And this is just your, well, this is lemon curry. You can do lemon curry, regular curry, just not sweet curry. Um, but I was just playing around and I thought, I wonder what curry would taste like. Well, I really like curry in it. It almost tastes like a, I don't know how to describe it. To me, it's almost a chickeny flavor. Then you're gonna take a can of whatever cream soup you want. This is cream of mushroom. You can do cream of chicken, you can do cream of mushroom, you can do cream of celery whatever cream soup that you want. I don't know, probably about a half teaspoon of pepper. Uh, half teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. It's really just kind of what you are feeling, but probably I'd go with about a half, well, I'd probably go with about a fourth teaspoon of pepper and a half teaspoon of salt. A cup of these uh, mixed frozen vegetables. stir that up and see if I think I need more and then about a cup of cheddar cheese like the shredded sharp cheddar cheddar this is the extra sharp let me say you don't want to measure over top of your bowl just like I done with that cheese because in case you get too much in there then 
you really should measure outside of the, your bowl. But it's just cheese. I didn't care if it was more than a cup. So that's why I done that. But I think that looks good. I think that's enough vegetables in there. So that was a cup of the frozen vegetables. All right, so let me clean this mess up, pull out my um, pie crust, and I'll be right back. I forgot to tell you all, while you're making your middle, go ahead and pull your dough out and set it on your stove. Let it kind of warm up. I completely forgot. So I'm gonna pop these in my microwave just for a few seconds, just to get them a little bit soft. Right, if you recall, this was my little uh, Frankenstein monster head I use for the, the biscuits. So I'm just gonna cut out my shapes. Just gonna set these all to the side. And you can take your dough, smash it back together, and roll it back out. I think my little white one is dirty. Same thing with this one. Okay, I'm adding that dough to what was left of the other dough. That little bit, it'll be third away. Now from here, all you do is take a little bit of your filling, and it's not gonna take much. Because you put too much in it, then it's going to come out the sides. So if you want a bigger cookie cutter, then by all means do a bigger cookie cutter. And obviously it's not gonna take this whole amount of the stuff I made. So you could either stick it in the fridge for a few days. You don't want it in there long. If you plan on doing the, like the biscuit things that I showed you. If you plan on, you know, doing those in the next few days, then obviously you can keep it in your fridge for a little bit. But if you don't think it's gonna be within just a few days that you're gonna make the biscuit pot pies, then you can put this in a Ziploc bag or some kind of freezer bag or, or, but you can put it in whatever is freezer safe and freeze it. And it should last at least a good, a good couple of months. And then you just pull it out and let it unthaw and either you can make ham pies again or you can make the chicken pot pies and the biscuit thing I've showed you. And I will link that video. It's probably better if you use something like my miniature cookie scoop would have been good to just kind of make sure that everything is the same amount, but I did not. Okay, uh, next I'm gonna get an egg and put it in a cup and beat it, kind of whip it up and add a little bit of water to it and I'll be right back. Okay, so you wanna kind of beat it up and add a little water to it. Not much, maybe. Maybe a tablespoon of that. That's your egg wash. Okay, so there's a few things you can do. You can either put these, you know, to the to the side somewhere and let me see if I can do it. Let's see. Let me move this guy over. So you could go ahead and make him some little faces before you stick it on there. However you think. Get you a sharp knife and kind of You know, it depends on how much time you have, how creative you want to be. Now, 
I'm probably not going to get this equal. My dad's the artist in the family, not me, as you can see. And then we could give him little nostrils here. And then, I don't know, whatever kind of mouth. Let's see. He's not going to be smiling, so. Okay, so you could be creative. Let me... You can be creative and draw his face out first like that. Then what you're gonna do is take your pastry brush and put it around the edge of your dough. Put your face on top. And then I usually just take my fork and kind of just like you would if it was a real pie and just kind of come around a little bit, just enough to try to get them together. If you don't want to do that, then you could probably just press them down real good. I'm not promising that they'll stick together, but I think they would. All right, so there's <laughs> with the pink coming out of his mouth. Okay, there's that way. You could also, if you're just in a hurry and you don't really care what they look like, I mean, you kind of want them cute, but, well, I guess ugly, whatever, but you don't want to take that much time because that will take a lot of time trying to do that. Then go ahead and do your egg wash. Put your face on. Mash them together. I think that will stick together, but I always just like to take that extra measure and put, you know, kind of smash them together a little bit. Which it does ruin the look a little bit, but then you can take and just kind of just circle around. And if you wanted nose, you could do nose. If not, you could just do a mouth and make it look like almost a ghost. So there's that way. So it's really your choice, however you wanna kind of do these little guys. And then at the end, once we get all of them on, we're gonna take this egg wash and put it over top, which honestly, that one does look better. It looks cuter. I might do some more like that. But you most certainly have to put some holes in them, whether it be holes to make like faces or just um, pricks of your fork. But you have to have, just like with the pie, you have to have a place for the air to escape. I'm putting way too much egg wash on this. I don't mean to, but it's...
try to do a jack o' lantern face. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm gonna mess it up. And I think I may have told y'all wrong. I'll, I'll go back when I edit this and I'll know. Uh, you put it on 450. I think I said 425. Egg wash again. Okay, I'm gonna put these in the oven at 450. I'm guessing 10 minutes. I will let you know if that is wrong, but I'm thinking 10 minutes. I'm thinking 10 minutes is all we're gonna need with these because they are thin, so. See, that's how much is left of that. So just put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in your freezer and save it for another supper. There they are. And it took about 13, 14 minutes at the 450. So there they are. There's our little monster hand paws. You just want to let them cool slightly. And then there you go. There's your little hand paw. And it's actually a little smaller than my hand. I thought I had recorded that and I hadn't. It was kind of gross. Cute. That was my favorite. And that looks like, well, you know what it looks like. Anyway, what I used to do was I would fix these little hand pies and I would fix either some homemade mashed potatoes or instant mashed potatoes and I'd add some purple food color into it and make them like purple mashed potatoes. Then I would fix macaroni and cheese and add green food color into that, which I know it was a lot of food color on that day, but uh, I would make them green. And I can't remember if I've done something else or not, but then I had the hand pies. And I will try to go back in time, because it's been a few years since I've done it, but I'll try to go back in time and find a picture. And if so, then I'll insert it here. So what'd you think of our little monster hand pies? They're cute and they're good. So hopefully I can get this out in time for you to fix them tomorrow. And hopefully you and your kiddos will like them. So, that's all. Uh, that's the end of this video. If you like it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, I really hope you do. Go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. We just have one more day left. So, with my extra video, hopefully I'll get that out. Um, but we are, we're through with the 13 snacks of Halloween. So, happy Halloween. And I will talk to you in the next one. Bye. Oh, by the way, if you like this video, then you click here and there. And you can subscribe there. Bye.